There she is, guys. The new Auto Fanatic project, the 57 Chevy Bel Air. Just got here. God, this car is so cool. So we're gonna unload it now, and uh, when I get it in the driveway, I'll, I'll shoot a quick demo video for you guys, and uh, we're gonna do some really cool stuff on the channel with this car. So this is a new client of ours from New York City, and uh, we gotta do some fine tuning on this bad boy and find it a new home. Man, she is pretty. So guys, we're gonna get this car unloaded, get it in the driveway, and then I'll finish up this video for you guys tonight. Hey guys, Auto Fanatic here. We have a really cool new project that just got dropped off for me to work on. 1957 Chevy Bel Air convertible. This is a piece of American automotive history right here, sitting in my driveway. I love the 50s cars, always have. I've had 55 Birds, 57 Birds. I just love the 50s cars. They're just an incredible time period for American culture all around. We had awesome music, great cars. America was at peace with each other. It was just a better time in society. So like, it's, it's just like really cool when you start looking at some stuff like this to see these cars 60 plus years still being resurrected, still being enjoy, enjoyed by collectors. And uh, this is my, this is what I love. I get excited over this. You could park a LaFerrari right next to it right now. And to be honest with you, I have no interest in the newer cars because they're so easy to obtain. That, you know, anybody could just go and buy one. This takes a different type of owner. It's a totally different type of ownership experience. This is basically experiencing part of American automotive culture that a lot of people don't get. The Europeans and people outside the United States never had this era and this period of society in their cars. So that's why a lot of these cars are going overseas. Uh, Europe and Asia are huge buyers for the Chevy Bel Airs and a lot of the vintage cars from the 50s. Because it's one of those things where every culture wants to experience this part of society and, and what we have, you know, living in this country. So it's, it's like really cool. And uh, I got to tell you, man, this is just a cool experience. When I had the call a couple of weeks ago, the guy called me up. He was referred to me by a big top restoration shop. He's like, listen, I, I know what you do. I know how you work and how meticulous you are. I want you to go through this car and make it perfect and possibly find it a new home. And that's really what it's going to be here for. So I'm going to do a lot of videos on this car. We're going to do some cosmetic, what I call Concord level detailing. I'm going to do a lot of polishing of the trim. We're going to do a cut and buff on the paint. I'm going to install a new convertible top. We're going to do some interior work. We're going to go over some of the chrome plating and pot metal. We're going to go over that. We're going to revamp the braking system, possibly put a modern fuel injection system on here so the car runs and drives better. We're going to go through the fueling system. So there's going to be a lot of stuff going on with this car and uh, I'm going to capture you know glimpses of it along the way and I'm definitely going to show you guys a full foam wash on a 57 Bel Air. You guys are going to trip out. It's not going to take 30 minutes. It's going to probably take me two and a half hours because the car is so big. And uh, we'll probably shoot that video in a few days and uh, get it up. And you guys are going to uh, love that because this is a totally different process when you wash something like this because these cars are old. They're very fragile. They leak. Uh, single stage paint. This is not a base coat, clear coat car. So you have to be very, very meticulous as far as the contact and what you're putting on something like this. So I'm going to get the camera off the tripod. I'm going to give you a little walk around. We'll give you some details of the 57 Bel Air. So guys, we're over at the front of the car. I mean, you just can't beat the 50s cars because if you look at some of these bumpers and I mean, if that was to, if you were to crash into somebody today with one of these cars, you would probably annihilate any modern car today with the plastic impact bumpers. But the 1950s are a very significant time period for automotive manufacturing because it was, it was, there was a lot of glitz, a lot of glam. And it was like, let's build the flashiest, the most flamboyant cars we can at the time in Detroit. And, and this is really what it was. I mean, you know, the Cadillacs, the Buicks, the Chevys. And, you know, these were family cars. These were attainable cars. But, uh, like I said, today, this car will get more looks than an exotic car parked right next to it. Just because you don't see these driving down the road uh, the way you see, like, especially where I live, where you see Maseratis and 911s and, you know, 488 Ferraris. They're, they're all over the place around here. So... This is just such a cool car, and uh, I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to talk a little bit about the ownership experience along the way with some more videos, 
and uh, I think you guys are going to really appreciate some of this content. It even has original 1957, I'll get closer on this, New York Empire State license plates. I mean, that just makes it even cooler to have the original black plates on this car. So let's just go over some of the details on the car. And this car has the Continental kit. You can see the side skirts right there. A lot of times those are missing on cars. And uh, there is the Continental kit. So the Continental kit was really popular in the 1950s because a lot of cars didn't have a lot of storage space in the trunk. And if you wanted to throw anything in there, what are you going to do with a spare tire? Unlike today, we didn't have run flat tires and air compressors and fix a flats in the car. You had a spare, a jack, and a lug wrench in every car. That's just the way it was up until about maybe eight, eight to ten years ago. But, uh, and these cars had bias ply tires, which in my opinion are the most dangerous tires to be riding on on modern day roads today. So this particular car has power steering. It has manual drum brakes, which I call the holy shit brakes because they don't really stop that well. Uh, it, it's just a total throwback. So just walk around the car and I'll show you another little detail. Look where the gas cap is. It's hidden in the quarter panel of the car. So today we get cars with no gas caps back then. They used to hide that stuff on us. And if you had the, pissed off the wrong girl in high school or college, she probably threw a rag in there or threw something down there and screwed up your whole fuel system. <laughs> a little bit more of the detail. I mean, this thing is just so cool. And it has that authentic 1950 smell when you get in it. And I'm sure this car has stories that each and every one of us wish we could go back and relive. So just look at this car. It's just such a timeless, timeless classic car from an era in our society that is long gone, guys. So, uh, I mean, just look at it. In the turquoise with the white, I mean, that's just one of my favorite colors all the way around from the 1950s. Uh, I had a 55 T-Bird in torch red with the red and white. I mean, it's just, they're just such cool cars. They really are. Yeah, they don't drive, you know, like a muscle car. They don't drive anywhere near like a modern car, but it's the ownership experience that makes it special. It's the conversations that you'll get with this car. It's the new friendships that you'll make over owning a car like this. It, it's just a totally different experience today. And uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about it with you guys on my channel. I'm going to get the camera. We're going to show you some of the details of the interior and the engine compartment. All right, guys. So we're taking you back in time right here. And this is the cockpit and cabin of a 57 Bel Air. And you guys could just see, oh, my God, the smell that you get in this car. It's unbelievable. And those are the gauges. I guess that you would consider that to be sporty in its day. This has a two-speed power glide on the column. And it has a small block Chevy V8 283. This was pretty much the foundation of all the new LT1, LT4 motors, guys. This single cam push rod engine. And as you guys can see, the blue and white interior is just so freaking cool. It really is. And look, we didn't have uh, shoulder belts. We had simple lap belts that if you did crash, you'd end up through the windshield. And this windshield was just replaced. Here's the seat adjustment lever. It's like made out of solid pot metal. The seat on this car, because I've taken these things out before, they, I don't know, to me, they weigh like 250 pounds. They're just extremely heavy. The frame is super overbuilt. And you can see here you have little crank for the vent windows, which is really cool. This is a nice touch because this car did not have air conditioning. Uh, some people, you know, over the years did put vintage air in these cars and, and we, you know, we, I, something I may advise the customer to do if he plans on keeping it, but uh, it's a total boat. I mean, check this thing out. Oh. Yep, that's a 50s horn. But just look at the level of detail, okay? Just to produce all of this stainless steel trim, I mean, throughout the whole side of the car, I mean, the 1957 is identifiably by the fins. You know, Cadillac had the fins, but, uh, you know, Chevy and the Thunderbird, that was just what they call the fin error. But, uh, like I said, you can never produce a car like this today. It would probably cost a million dollars. With the amount of stampings and tooling and dies used to do all the metal work, uh, it just can never be done today. So, that's why these cars are desirable. That's why they're collectible. That's why they're worth a lot of money. And there's a huge following for the cars from the 1950s. So let's just get the engine compartment open and uh, I'll show you a little bit about under the hood. So unlike modern cars, there's no latch release on the interior. 
it's all done right here and you could see the little small block V8 you could hear the echo in my voice because it's like a gigantic cavity that I'm inside right now and uh, this is a pretty clean car it's actually it's pretty nice it's I would say it's a number two driver quality car it's not a number one car you guys probably don't want a number one car because you'll never be able to drive it you'll have to flatbed it everywhere especially at shows it has the body buck tag and data tag still on the firewall that's all original this car is not rusted out was never in a collision this is the original factory radiator support it has the original generator and power steering pump this is this guy's you guys anybody that works on modern cars you're gonna get a trip out of this because the power steering pump and the generator are driven off the same belt and they're connected simultaneously so you don't really see that today a lot of times they're run independently with different belts uh, especially with the v-belts but this you know this is not done like that this has a single v-belt running the show and there is the manual master cylinder that's actually not the original style master cylinder these cars had a single bowl master cylinder but somewhere along the line somebody put the dual reservoir for safety but to be honest with you it really should have a power booster because this car is big it's heavy and it's riding on drum brakes and drum brakes on a car like this doesn't really stop you that well especially in a in a new york minute so that's it guys i'm gonna wrap this video up ah you hear that clunk you'll never get that today with a modern car so i'm gonna wrap this video up for you guys get it up um like i said in about a day or so i'll uh, i'll do some more videos for you guys showing some more about the details of the car. We're gonna do a foam wash, we're gonna do some detail work and uh, get it up on the channel and I'll show you some tips and tricks that I use along the way when I work with any kind of vintage car. We wanna take this car to the next level. If we wanna bring this car to auction, a lot of the stuff that I wanna to do to the car could probably yield another 20 to 30% in value. And what we call in my business, my other business is called cosmetic restoration or Concor detailing. Basically to the point where we take the trim off, get all the trim restored, put a new top on, do the interior, make sure all the numbers and chassis correct. It's already got the correct tires. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's already done on this car, but it's about taking it to that next level from the way it is now, the way somebody may want to just jump in and hold on to it and it's going to just keep going up in value because these cars are not going down in value anytime soon. So hope you guys like this video. Stay tuned for, uh, for more videos of the 57 Bel Air Project on the channel, and I'll throw some more posts on my Instagram feed as well. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, check out my new website, autofanatic.com. I'll put a link in the description below. I'm also going to be doing a lot of articles and stories on my lifestyle news section of this car, so you don't want to miss that. And uh, see you guys soon. Take care. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.